News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on the Plus. It is a Wednesday, and we are going to have a very busy show for you this morning. We're going to do what we can to answer as many questions as we can on the stimulus, on unemployment to some degree, if we can get into that, as well as as it relates to taxes. Think about it. Today's April 15th. It would be the deadline for most of us to pay our taxes, except for, of course, this pandemic and the delay now we don't have to pay until July 15th. Now, I want to remind you, we're going to be on the plus here. You see the number on the screen where you can call in to ask your questions. We are also going to be streaming live this morning on Facebook at newschannel5.com and newschannel5 plus. Message me your questions there and I'll get to them as quickly as possible with our guest who is joining us on Zoom this morning. She was with us last week and she's kind enough to come on again this morning. Dr. Friday, good morning to you, ma'am. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly and I will tell you, I would never been able to do this on a true April 15th deadline. <laughs> is it a little weird for you right now? I mean, just think about it. <laughs> totally. The delay, it's never been done before, has it, like this uh, ever? Well, 20, 25 years of doing taxes, right. April 15th, or give or take because of a weekend, a deadline. This has been the most unique tax season of my life, yes. Just to be clear for folks on this, now we don't have to apply now until July 15th. That does not mean with this delay that there's been two months of interest you're going to owe on whatever you might have had to have paid, does it? Or how does that work out? Yeah. No late filing fees, no penalties, no interest. Think of July 15th as April 15th when it comes to the filing deadline. They have just given us another 90 days. Okay. And, and as far as people with their refunds and stuff, many of them have already obviously oh. filed and gotten their refunds back and that, that wasn't affected. Correct. And if you have a refund, there is absolutely no reason for someone not to file. I had a young lady who came in last week and she hadn't filed for four years. Every single year had a refund, which was awesome because they extended. We can only get refunds for three years. So 16, 17, and 18, by April 15th, 16 would have fallen off. But because of this extension, they extended that as well. So if you have a refund for 16, you can still get it up until July 15th. So this was an awesome thing for her. Okay, let's get into the nuts and bolts, and we're going to get to questions right. and comments on Facebook as well as uh, if you want to call in right now. But let me hit you on some of the biggies that I've heard about people messaging me on my page, and, and maybe you can hit up on this. A lot of folks have already filed their taxes and, and wonder, well, if I've already filed and already gotten my refund, does that mean I won't get a stimulus check? And, and, and a lot of people want to know, and I'll hit you on this too, is this check when we get it something that's going to be taxable come next year? Is it a gift? Do we have to pay it back? What about those things? Okay, so the first question is, if you've already filed and you put your banking information and received your refund electronically, you're probably going to be one of the first to get the stimulus check. I have a brother that we filed back in February. He received his stimulus check yesterday. So they're already giving out the stimulus and it went directly into his account. So I would say early filers probably getting earlier stimulus. The second part of that, is it going to be taxable? It is not going to be taxable to anyone that meets that criteria of 75,000 for a single or less or 150 or less for an individual in the year of 2019. Here's the tricky part. A lot of times people haven't filed 19s. Did your 19s change drastically from your 18s? Maybe you made 79,000 in 19 instead of 75. That hasn't actually been fully addressed. My understanding there is going to be some sort of payback on your 2020 based on your 2019. Nick, it's going to be creative when, uh, when it comes down to really understanding how that's going to work as far as is it going to be just a forgiven debt? It is not taxable income at this point. They are not considering this taxable income in any sense. But if you end up getting a refund that you weren't entitled to, will there be a payback? I, I have a feeling the answer is going to be no, but it's possible that you will have to do that over taking from your refunds or making you pay back the money kind of like they've done in the past. Okay, some of this then is going to be wait and see as they're still working yeah. through the rules. I got you on that. Another question that I get quite commonly, and we'll probably get it again if folks miss this, me asking it now is, 
there are many people out there that get some type of benefit, whether it's Social Security, SSI, disability, and it comes to them on some type of an express card. It's, it's kind of a direct deposit into a type of card that they can then use. And they want to know if they're getting their stimulus check, will it be sent directly to that card or do they have to set up something else? Yeah, it is my understanding that it will not go on to any of the cards um, unless that is a legitimate bank account. The IRS is saying specifically bank accounts. So if you're receiving it on a card of some sort, I'm going to say that you're probably going to receive it in the mail, which could lead to a question. If the IRS does not have your current address, you may want to go to your computer. Now you can. The app is open on irs.gov where you can update your banking. You can track where your stimulus is. And most important, Nick, is people that might be on disability and Social Security but raising a child because they're not required probably to file a tax return. But those individuals need to go on to IRS.gov and tell the IRS about that, uh, that dependent that is under the age of 16 so they can get that extra money for that child. Okay, and boy, I'm really glad you mentioned that about the cards because up until this point, I had just been hearing time and again, since it's not been real clear, that the money will be sent, the stimulus, to whatever it is the IRS or Social Security sends to you already. But in right. this case, if it's a card, it's got to be something that's bank-oriented, and I want people to make note of that this morning. If you just have an express card, you're going to have to do something to make sure there's a bank account or or they won't send it to the card it'll just be later that just you get your check because they're going to mail it to you that is correct that is my direct understanding from a meeting i went through they are specifically saying bank accounts now some people do have online banking that they only use access through cards and that may qualify still but my under again they are specifically saying no direct deposits on bank account only Okay, and you mentioned a moment ago dependents, and I think it's real important yes. we say this regardless. You think dependents instantly, well, that's a child or something along those lines, and children are not going to get this stimulus check. But, but, okay, there can be adults sometimes, maybe an elderly person that's a dependent. If you are listed as a dependent, you do not get a stimulus check, correct? That is 100% correct. And I have had many people, probably keeping me busier than normal, rethinking the dependency. Maybe mom has been on your tax return because she does live in the house and you help support her. She only has Social Security. Maybe this year in 2019, instead of you getting a $500 credit, maybe mom fi doesn't file anything, not showing as a dependent, and therefore she would get all $1,200. There's going to be a rethinking. Remember, any child over the age of 16 is a $500 credit. Now, in some cases, parents are getting educational credits, which also means that they're getting twenty-five or up to twenty-five hundred dollars. So, five, and almost three thousand dollars. It would be not. It wouldn't be intelligent to take your college kid off your return with your three thousand and only get twelve hundred dollars for the stimulus. So you have to be smart enough to understand what the differences are. All right, we've got a lot of comments coming on Facebook, which I'll scroll through and try to answer as many of those as we can. We've got calls for you as well. Let's start one off for you, Doc Friday, with uh, Jeanette. Jeanette, good morning. What's your question? I was just wondering, like, my husband is on uh, disability, and I do file joint with him. So his, his stimulus would still come in my bank account, correct? Okay, they filed jointly, and her husband's on disability, and she's wondering, I guess they would each get a check. If, if they're like that, does it go into her account, or would it go into each of their accounts split? Well, that's a great question. My understanding is if you finally jointly, a $2,400 deposit will go into the account that was listed on the tax return, if it was. For example, maybe she filed with both of them and she had a refund that year. It would have went into that account or you might want to update it. But it would be a $2,400 for a married couple. They're not separating them 12 and 12. Gotcha. Good. Let's go next to Connie. Connie, good morning. What's your question, Connie? Hi, Connie. Are you there, Connie? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Yes, sir. I was calling to see when I would get my stimulus check. Okay. Do you have a direct deposit? Mm -hmm. Well, my money, my uh, tax money went on my H&R block card. Okay. 
There we go. So she has an H&R Block card. We were just talking about that, Doc Friday. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can check if you filed 18 or 19. You can go to irs.gov, click on the COVID-19 button on the top of the page, and there are two things for non-filers or filers. She would be a filer, and she can check the status of her stimulus check. Okay. Now, our understanding, based on what you said before, is that if she has an H&R Block card where she normally it's gets her benefit, it's going to come in the mail. It's going to come in the mail. So her question was, when will she get it? And we know those who are getting direct deposit, and some of them have already received it, they get it quickly first. It may be a while before those checks. Uh, my understanding is they won't start mailing out checks until May 1st. And then from that point on, it may be a while. So you get it quicker if you can arrange direct deposit. Right, which she can then go on to the IRS and she can update that information so she is part of the direct deposit. It will tell her that they're planning on mailing her check sometime in the first few weeks of May. Um, it will give it, at least you can track your stimulus right there on the IRS.gov irs.gov website yeah. sorry oh no exactly i got you get you tongue tied to this listen doc we're gonna take a break when we come back okay. we've got a lot of folks uh, stay right where you are if you're following us on facebook we've got a whole show with her we'll answer a lot of your questions coming in streaming live on facebook at newschannel5.com and those of you on hold we'll get to you as well try to answer as much as we can stimulus unemployment and taxes with the expert right after this